was three? Like I said, I started when I was like 10 years old doing hand poke stuff. Well, I had born to raise hell, hand poked on my leg. It was horrible. Well, I was 14 years old. My dad took me down to the Burt Rims, and Zeke Owens covered it with a panther. In 1965, me and this kid named Jeff opened a little shop in Lawndale when neither one of us knew what the hell we were doing. We went down to Long Beach and hung out and watched, you know what I mean? And we'd come back, we bought some machines and we were messing people up and trying to learn, you know? And that went on for a while. And then in the early 70s, I went to work with Mike Pike's dad, J.R. Pike. He's probably the first real mentor I had other than the guys I watched down in Long Beach at Burt Grimm's. So we both went down and hung out with Phil Sims, Mark Reynolds, Colonel Todd, Bob Shaw. We learned from them a little bit. JR's wife, her old lady, she acted like she owned half the shop. I told him, you know what, I don't need this shit. And I went back to work in the machine shop. Colonel Todd asked Phil Sims, do you know anybody looking for a job? We need somebody out in the shop out in La Puente. And Phil told him, well, call Rick. He's working in a machine shop for Christ's sakes. You know, he'd probably be stoked to go back to work as a tattooing, you know? So they called me and I went and talked to Todd and they hired me and I, I never even went back to the machine shop. My uh, brother was working there at the same time. And I told my brother Gary, I says, hey, bring my tools home and pick up my last check. I'm not going back. I'm starting to work next Monday at the tattoo shop in La Puente. And that was when I went to work for Bob Shaw and Colonel Todd. And then after that, I went down to Long Beach and it was sort of funny because Fat Mike was one of the owners of the La Puente shop. It was Colonel Todd, Bob Shaw, and Fat Mike. Well, Fat Mike was screwing up a lot, drinking and using speed, and he worked at the Burt Rims. And so Todd got tired of going and dragging his ass out of the bar across the street. And he finally told him, well, you got to go back to La Puente, and we can't deal with this shit. And I actually replaced my boss <laughs> at, at Burt Rims. One night, I was tattooing this Harley Eagle on this guy. It was a little shield with the Eagle on top of it. And back then, we're talking in the, in the early 80s, it was like a $45 tattoo, right? So I put the tattoo on the guy, and all I had left to do was put some yellow in the, 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 the bar across the Harley shield. And the guy says, oh, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm gonna throw up. And I tell him, well, don't throw up in the shop, go out front and throw up in the curb. So he goes outside and I'm sitting there for a while and I tell the helper, well, where the hell is that guy? You know, go out and find him. So I go out there and I see him getting in a car down the street, right? So I run down the street and he's just like, you know, flipping me off and shit. So I reach down to my boot and pull a 25 automatic out and shoot around over his head, right? Bang! I'm just going out over the ocean, it's no big deal, right? Well, the stupid guy, instead of just taking off down the side street, right, he flips a U-turn and tries to run me down in the middle of the street. So I sidestep him. I got the gun right at his head, and it was jammed. You know, which is a good thing now. But at the time, I, oh, man, and I freed that sucker out, and I emptied the whole clip through the back window of the car. And Mark's talking about, Rick, you can't do that shit. I told him, what, you weren't watching? <laughs> you mean I can't do it? <laughs> and then from there, it was all downhill, 25 years of Bird Grimm's, you know? And pretty much that was up until 03 when they sold the building. Oh, it was devastating. I, I had worked for these people for 28 years, right? And when Wanda Shaw died, that was Bob's wife, Larry Shaw, the son, just sold the property, That's sent me an eviction notice. After 28 years of supporting his mom and dad, and I can't remember so that was pretty fucked up. Now I just work a little here and a little there. You know, I, I do Mondays at Shamrock with Mark. Tuesday and Friday I'm with Tennessee Dave and Baba. And it's sort of funny because back in the day, me and Tennessee Dave were like rivals, right? I ran Burt Grimm's, he ran Captain Jim's shop, and they'd break each other's windows out and shit, right? And now we're like best friends, so it's pretty cool. And then uh, on Saturdays I work with Robert Atkinson, and I do appointments at American Beauty and Sunset Beach, which is right by my house. And that's with Opie Ortiz, the guy from Sublime. Other days, occasionally, I'll go set in with Catfish Carl out in Realistic, like on a payday weekend or something, just for something to do. And I do a lot of tattoo conventions. Yeah. Nowadays, it's you know pretty mainstream, you know, which is good. The art has evolved. I mean, it sort of goes in circles, I think. You know, they were doing portraits in the turn of the century. That's not something somebody just started doing recently. You know what I mean? A single needle work and all that. It, it's weird. Uh, 
the tattooing changes, but it keeps coming around full circle. You know what I mean? Like in the 40s, they were doing nothing but five and seven needle outlines, right? And then in the early 60s, Burt Grimms and Bob Shaw and Colonel Todd was looking at some of the work that was coming back from World War II, and they're saying, oh my God, look at this stuff. It's all blurry and nasty because the lines were too big, right? So they started the three and four needle outlines rather than the five and seven. And the reason they did it was because the tat small tattoos were coming back all messed up. You couldn't even tell what they were, right? And so now the young kids that don't know the history, right, are doing five and seven needle outlines on small tattoos. Well, in 20 years, they're going to look like shit. You know what I mean? I got a pin up right there, right? That was done in 1965 with a three needle outline. Now it looks like a five. Well, the reason it looks like a five because it's 30 years old. You know? Yeah, he's filming all this shit, right? <laughs> We're going to edit the shit and the fuck you and all that shit out. <laughs> he's getting some good stories. <laughs>